All right, welcome back, Andy and Furness with you, Sports Radio 950 KJR. This is a, a topic I'm fascinated with, and I say a topic. It's actually a wide-ranging topic, and it's what's going on in the NFL right now with undrafted free agents. And if you're a Seahawks fan, you're probably asking yourself, what the hell? Like, why don't we – we kind of know some names that may be signing with Seattle, and, of course, here – it's a pretty significant deal because last I checked, your best wide receivers for a few years were both undrafted free agents, guys by the name of Baldwin and Curse. You might have remembered them. Uh, Michael Bennett came to the league, undrafted free agent. The list goes on and on. For whatever reason, this seems to be some sort of weird cloak and dagger thing, and it's it's not just Seattle. I, I want to point that out. I don't think it's just Seattle. I think the whole process is, I don't know if it's changed, it's weird, what have you, but it's when I say cloak and dagger, like we're just not really sure who's going where right now, at least officially. So I want to kind of jump into that process a little bit and see where we're at. And the best player to talk, best person to talk about that is probably a player agent. So joining us right now on the Beacon Plumbing Hotline, Luke McMurtry. He is a player agent. He has, I believe, an undrafted free agent coming here to Seattle as well, so he can take us through the process. Luke, how are you today, man? I'm doing well, man. Thanks for having me on. I, I, help me out here. I, first of all, who do you have? Who, who's coming to Seattle? Can you at least tell us that? Because the Seahawks haven't released anything yet. Yes, um, Josh Johnson, um, running former running back, uh, the, the University of Louisiana Monroe. Um, contract signed and everything, um, all pending the um, the physical coming up. Um, but he's traveling out there next week, so that's one person you can add to your list. That's for sure. So is that is that what the process is now? These guys have to pass physicals. Is this pandemic related? Why nothing's really happened yet? No, not at all. Um, so they'll they'll fly them in next week. Um, they'll have the first day they get there. Um, they'll have to do a COVID test. Um, second day, they'll do another COVID test, and they'll do a physical. Um, and as long as those things are okay, contract gets signed the next day. Okay, take us through the process. W- what's going on with the undrafted free agent process here and elsewhere? I-, I know you've been kind of outspoken about it, but it just seems like a – It's it's. It, I don't know if it's changed over the years. I mentioned Doug and Jermaine. I mean, I remember when Doug was signed, it was like, hey, we just got – you know, Doug Baldwin's coming in along with these other 10 undrafted free agents. It was basically announced on the Saturday at the end of the draft. In fact, John Schneider and Pete Carroll used to be – we didn't see them until they got that process done, which is you know usually yeah. a couple hours after the draft. That's all changed. What what's going on with this process now? Yeah, no, man. I mean, it's it's pretty wild. Um, and it's crazy. No one really talks about it. Um, the media, there's no really stories on it or anything. Um, from the very very start of the draft process, so we sign um, player agents sign these kids when they're done with college, usually at the end of December um, or early January. Um, and so over the next, I'd say two months. Um, so that'd be all the entirety of January and February. There are already kind of teams reaching out, kind of dabbling around, just kind of getting to know him a little bit. Um, and some teams will even start calling me early on um, or player agents very early on, kind of trying to get in good with you. You can really kind of find out pretty early on through the draft process when a team is trying to kind of butter you up a little bit, you know, um, kind of hype your guy up, kind of really be nice to you, really check in. And you can usually tell they're kind of already trying to start recruiting for undrafted free agency. Because um, if a player is going to get drafted, the team doesn't really need to contact the player rep all throughout the draft process. Which, you know, with our connections or relationships, we're always talking to teams, kind of trying to pitch our guy. Um, but from the team perspective, so from Seattle's perspective, they don't really need to call the player agent at all through the draft process unless they're kind of trying to recruit um, my client and me for the draft process or for the undrafted process. Um, so fast forward all the way through, um, the last two weeks before the draft, um, teams start blowing Josh up. Uh, or teams were blowing Josh up. They were having the running back coach call, um, a head coach even called. Um, they're having all these calls and just really just, hey, look at our depth chart, you know, with our scheme, with the way we run, with this outside zone or whatever team it was, really pitching him, trying to convince him, hey, this is why you need to come. Um, and then so and those are the teams you know, those teams probably aren't going to draft you um, because that's why they're pitching. The teams you think are going to draft, the teams you've talked to, you know, once here and there, they're not trying to pitch you on, hey, look at our depth chart, look at our roster, blah, blah. Um, and so once you get into the draft day, teams are already kind of messing – kind of shooting you text like, hey, man, like we're going to be available at the end of the draft. Hey, man, we're looking at Josh undrafted. Hey, man, um, give us a call before you agree to anything. And this starts – this was starting Thursday morning. Um, so Thursday, Friday morning, I was having teams text and call me like, hey, don't make a deal after the draft unless you let us know first, please. Hey, we want to know Josh. Well, I don't know how much uh, you know about Josh and you guys did about the draft process, but we were very convinced he was going to get drafted. Um, I had some teams say that they were looking at him in the sixth, even – Saturday, the morning up, but the morning before day three of the draft started, we actually had some teams say, hey, we're looking at them in the sixth. Hey, I think we've got a couple picks in the seventh is what one team said. Um, so we may may look at Josh for those spots. So we had some teams call saying, hey, hey, 
keep us in mind if he goes undrafted. And I was like, nope, don't worry about it. He's getting drafted. If you want him, just draft him. If you want him, draft him. Um, so six went through some of those teams who were interested, drafted some running backs. Um, and this draft, a lot of running backs actually dropped back in the draft a lot farther than some of us thought. Um, and so we knew that probably wasn't going to help Josh's case to go and draft or to get drafted. Um, and so we had some teams hit up. And as soon as that draft's over, some teams, it's actually against the NFL rules to agree to an undrafted deal before the draft is over. Um, and in not admitting any teams, some teams are pressuring you to agree to a deal before the draft is even over with, um, which is which I've never heard of it, actually anything ever becoming of it. Um, but teams are actually pressuring you because they're trying to get the undrafted lined up because it is a wild west. There's no logic to it. There's no timing of it. You're just fielding calls. As soon as the draft is over, I probably fielded 15 calls in 25 minutes um, where I'd, I forgot to call a team back, one team, because I kept calling the next person who called me, bam, bam. Five minutes go by. I'm like, oh, crap, got to go back and call them. Um, there's no rhyme or reason to it. There's no system behind it. It's just really the seventh round. Teams are already trying to call you. Getting it. Some teams are trying to kind of play with the gray area of that line a little bit um, and get you to agree to a money deal or get you to agree to something. And so as soon as that draft is over, all those calls are coming in. There's two things to negotiate um, for an undrafted free agent that I don't think a lot of people know. There's the salary, but um, there's the signing bonus. Um, which is, you know, everyone knows what signing bonus is. You pass a fiscal, you get the signing bonus. Um, you can also ne- negotiate the P5 salary guarantee. So what this player five salary guarantee is, just for math purposes, let's say we've got an undrafted player and they offer, let's say any player, they offer a 10,000 signing bonus and a 100,000 player five salary guarantee, P5 salary guarantee. So what that means is if the player doesn't make a, 53-man roster or a practice squad for the entirety of the next season. So for those 17 weeks, he doesn't make a practice squad or an active roster. That team has to pay that player that $100,000. Now, if said undrafted player makes a P squad or a 53-man roster, all that money is, goes offset against that $100,000. So let's say, uh, let's say a player made a P squad um, for three weeks. You just calculate the minimum P squad salary times three, and then you take that out of that $100,000. Well, if he doesn't get signed for the rest of the year and gets released after week three, that team is still going to owe him around seventy thousand wow. um, dollars. So, so that's really all nego- that's all that's all negotiating. Then that's all part of the negotiating yes. process. I, I know this is just a crazy the whole process of undrafted free agents. I mean, because like you said, it's it really comes into it's recruiting. It's like almost like college recruiting, it's exactly but it's like it but it's almost like speed dating recruiting, right? Like you're it's, it happens just like that. Is it a good process or can it be done better? And if it can be done better, how should it be done better? It needs to be done better. Um, because like I was saying, when I had those 15 teams call, I had 15 calls in 25 minutes. They're not just saying, hey, we want to sign Josh. They're saying, hey, we'll give you this P5 salary. We'll give you this signing bonus. Some teams actually don't even do pow- um, guaranteed player five salaries, paragraph five salaries at all. Um, the Packers, for example, they do not do any of that. Um, and they, do, they only do a $7,000 signing bonus. Every undrafted player gets the same signing bonus. There's no negotiating. So when the Packers call you, you know, hey, I'm getting, I got a seven thousand dollar offer, and that's it. So you're negotiating all these numbers while you're getting all these calls. Um, so it's just it's really tough to keep up with. The teams are really pressuring you, like, hey, man, we've got five minutes. I need to know in ten minutes. And it's like, no, you actually don't. We can take a step back, give us some time to figure out what's the best spot for our player. Um, so the way I think it'd be better, I think it needs to wait to Monday morning. Um, I really do, especially with players. When you've got, you know, five or six players in the draft, let's say three of your guys get drafted. So you're celebrating, you're happy for those guys. And then you've got three who also go undrafted. You're fielding all of these calls within 20 minutes of the draft. Um, that's just tough. It's not fair on the kid. It's tough on the agent. It's kind of tough for these teams too, because it doesn't give them the time for them to sit back and really look at, okay, where do we want to, what holes do we want to fill? We've got $160,000 we can use for signing bonuses. How do we want to play with this money? Um, and it's just tough, man. It's just not fair to the guys. It does not give them ample enough time. Uh, I, why wouldn't they just increase the number of rounds in the draft? Like, why wouldn't you go back to the days of 10, 12 rounds? So the NFLPA and player reps, um, I would actually be a little bit of against that. Um, because it's if you look at the percentages, it's already a little tough for a sixth and seventh round player to make the roster. Um, so if they made it, let's say, even 10 rounds, um, so let's add three rounds to it. Those guys would be very less, be very not likely to make mm-hmm. team. Um, and also, I would ra- I, I would have rather Josh went undrafted than been picked in the last 20 picks, probably in the seventh round, because that gives us the option to choose where he goes undrafted. 
Um, and so the player reps, like we, we, we kind of like that if a guy goes undrafted. I mean, it sucks to not hear your guys' name called and him get to have that experience with his team. But I would rather handpick my player to the right city and the right team than him get drafted by a team where we don't think he can make the roster. Uh, Luke uh, McMurtry, a uh, player agent joining us here. He's got a, 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 a Seahawk coming in, Josh Johnson running back, which we're excited about uh, to see him on the field. Finally, I'm excited to see anybody on the field. Finally, I, I got to wrap it up here in a second, but as I'm doing so, I'm, I'm thinking to myself that, you know, and this, this is fascinating. I think there's a lot more things to talk about with you as well. Just overall, I'd love to pick your brain on some other things, but to wrap up this segment, uh, does Seattle have a good reputation as a, as a uh, destination for undrafted free agents? I, I mean, it feels like Schneider and Carroll are, are guys. Everyone says it's competition and it's open and all those things. I kind of feel like here, that's really the, they've got no problem cutting fourth rounders. Like, and, and some teams do. They've got no problem cutting guys and keeping an undrafted free agent. Is Seattle a good destination for undrafted free agents? What's the reputation around the league? No, I think it's a very good spot. Um, I, I wouldn't have sent Josh there, that's for sure. Um, I do think it's a good spot. And, Back, I mean, looking at um, some of the wide receivers they've had have great success as undrafted free agents. Um, that was a couple of years ago. Um, and just off the top of my head, I can't think of any undrafted guys who really – I mean, Puna Ford. Puna Ford, um, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. He's played pretty well. Brian Monet. Um, undrafted guy. Yeah, Brian Monet. Yeah, there are yeah. a couple of guys who have had solid careers. Um, and so – and it's not you, – you look at that a little bit as a player agent before you send him to a team. You look at how many guys undrafted they had last year. Um, and how many guys actually didn't end up making a 53 in a P squad. Um, but they've got a good reputation. They've always done me very, very well. Other agents I've worked with in the past, um, Schneider and the entire um, staff has treated us very, very well and very fairly through that process. Um, and so I think it's a good destination, and I trust that franchise and organization is going to treat my guys well and give them a good opportunity. Hey, man, I appreciate you coming on today. Hopefully I can pick your brain about this. I think it's fascinating for fans to kind of go behind the curtain a little bit. Nobody wants to go behind the curtain, and there's a lot going on. So hopefully we can talk again, man. I appreciate the conversation. Absolutely, man. Thanks for having me on.